Okay, uh, welcome guys. Um, we're going to start the course on youth ministry. Um, so good to see you all. Um, good to have you back. I hope you all are doing well. All right, okay. Uh, before we just continue, can I, um, uh, here, can I quickly request uh, um, either Dave or a Prince to just lead us in prayer? Someone? Father, we thank you, Lord God. We thank you that you have given us this time and this opportunity to come together as Lord Jesus to even though we are distant, we, we can learn from each other, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Father. And we pray for this class, Lord Jesus, as we learn, Lord God, we pray mm -hmm. that you anoint our pastor uh, to help him give each one of us the word that we need, Lord Jesus. Mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Cool, guys. Uh, well, 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 okay. Hi, Aaron. Hey, Thomas. Kiran. Good to see you guys. Okay. Uh, well, we're going to get started with a youth ministry. Um, Pastor Selena has finished her. Uh, of course, curriculum and children's ministry. And uh, we're just going to learn a little bit about youth ministry and the importance of it. Um, so let me just go ahead and share my screen. The reverb in my voice? Okay. How is it now? Is the reverb still there? Because I'm. Okay, I think. Okay, I don't know. I didn't do anything different from the first class. Everything is as is. Yeah. Uh, is it better? Are you? Am I loud enough? Well, is it too distracting? Uh, is it same for you as well? At least Prince, Thomas, Aaron. Okay, uh, little noises there, but that's not much disturbance. We can hear. Okay. That's, this is this is strange because I didn't have this problem um, with the first hour, two hours. Okay. Sorry, no other issues. All right, thanks, guys. Um, sorry for that. Let's we'll get uh, moving. Right. Um, so in this course, um, this is, you know, same uh, BC uh, 313, Introduction to Youth Ministry. Okay, it's just an introduction in this course. And in the time that we have, we we'll just look at a few topics um, as an introductory topics, subjects that um, involves youth ministry. Okay, and uh, we'll discuss why is youth ministry important and uh, youth ministry with, with a vision uh, identifying your audience, like, you know, who who are the youth uh, that you are ministering to. Uh, that's what I mean when I say identifying your audience, okay? Um, youth ministry in the local church, some of the organizational aspects, um, challenges in youth ministry, understanding the youth culture, and how do we ignite passion among the youth, okay? Um, so these are the few things that we will learn in this subject. So, um, and uh, the book report will be, uh, the final grading will be on, on this book called Your First Two Years in Youth Ministry, for which uh, I will share up for the PDF in the classroom section. And you'll, you'll be able to uh, go through that as well, okay? Um, but I'll give you all the details of that as we go on. Um, 
Okay. So uh, why is youth ministry important? Why is youth ministry important? Okay. Um, I, I just want to hear from you all. Why do you think it's important? Before I go ahead and give some stats and numbers, uh, you know, from the notes. Um, but uh, I want to hear you tell me, why is youth ministry important? Speak, unmute and speak. Yeah, uh, it's it's important because uh, they are the future leaders. Okay, it's important because they are future leaders. Okay. Okay, Kiran, why is youth ministry important? Or is it not important? Yeah. So youth ministry is important because of the youth, uh, they don't uh, distract and go wrong way. And yeah, so. Okay. All right, they are the future leaders and uh, they tend to go the wrong way. So they need to be led in the right way. That's another reason why we need the youth ministry. Okay, thank you. And uh, Prince. Uh, you can gather uh, like in the sorry friends or I, sorry lost you there uh, uh, learn to twelfth grade actually uh, youth is uh, important when uh, they are in uh, college they can uh, gatherly do the ministry or share, share the word of God. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Okay. That's interesting. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that, Prince. Okay. All right. I just one more person here, Dave. Uh, aren't you? Dave or Thomas? I hope you're there. You can hear me. Why is it yes, yes, important? Uh, where uh, in that age only so much of distractions and uh, so many attractive things in the world. So that's where uh, church has to focus on needs to get back uh, their, uh, to help them their relationship with the God. So there is a lot of chance to go astray. So that's where we have to focus on the youth ministry. Okay. And so. Uh... People older, people who are not in the youth don't go astray. I'm just asking. <laughs> it's not like that. But uh, the there, there's no and distractions youth, there's or attractions. No, it, it's there in all the age, but uh, in in this age, there is a lot of chance to uh, fall into that. Mm. <laughs> right. If there is the, yeah. in all. No, I get what you're saying. I'm just teasing. Okay. <laughs> right. Yeah, okay, thanks guys. Thank you for sharing uh, your thoughts. And uh, always, you know, it's always good to hear your thoughts uh, because if you're talking about a subject, I think the very important, at least in my opinion, it's always important to ask why more than the what and the how and the where and when. Now, why is it important? And I think that kind of sets the tone for us to answer every other question a little better, right? Um, so hence the question, why is youth ministry important? And all of you, what you've shared is absolutely right and spot on, right? Uh, but in addition, um, we see here, you know, that, you know, we begin by asking, who are the youth? Okay, we see youth ministry is important, but then we say, uh, and we begin by asking, who are the youth? Okay, and uh, here's what, uh, you know, a few resources I have to say. The United Nations uh, for statistics purposes defines youth as the persons between the ages of 15 and 24 without prejudice or uh, to other definitions by member states okay so they define the youth category as 15 to 24 and uh, the united nations general assembly defines youth as persons between ages of 15 to 24 uh, the world bank uses this term with reference to people between 15 and 25. Uh, the Commonwealth 
youth program refers to the young people as youngsters aged between 15 and 29. Uh, most of the bishop uh, conferences refer to youth as youngsters starting from 18 to 30, 35. Okay, so, <clears throat> and you see there's like, uh, um, like a wide variety, uh, or at least for the most of it, the starts at, at the age of 15. And you can go on to 24, to 25, 29, 30, and 35, a young adult, right? So <clears throat> and those are who the, some of these, uh, some of the world uh, organizations refer to as you, right? But so beyond <clears throat> all these definitions, uh, uh, youth are the most dynamic, uh, section of any society and most fascinating stage of life, right? It's the most, <clears throat> like you guys said, it's, uh, they, there's so much happening and there's so much of energy that, at that age, right? Um, there's some, that's why it's so dynamic. Uh, and, and I would say that the, the, the potential is so much that they are like the future leaders, right? They, they, can, they can be shaped and formed the future leaders of our country of, or, or of any nation, right? Um, uh, they are the dynamic section of any society in the most fascinating stage of life. Um, I am loving my youth. I hope you are loving it. Okay. Um, I'm still 18, just kidding. You know? So when we think of youth, we think all of that is beautiful uh, in life, such as fashion, sports, arts, media, new technologies, fun, adventure, relationships, idealism, creativity, great dreams, and the list can go on, isn't it? Uh, you know, I mean, all of this and beyond, right? Relationships, and you can just take one of the subjects and you know, just take say, for example, sports or arts, uh, we can just elaborate and just see, we can do our own research on you know how many young people are attracted to sports. We have so many football clubs that's beginning in our city that's encouraging not just young people, just children from the age of four and five. Uh, you know, and everybody wants to get into arts and different kinds of you know. Uh, when I say arts, it's not just painting, but uh, any form of art like a dance or theater, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's it's so different now, isn't it? And it's like so vibrant, and everybody's energetic, and I want to be involved in so many things, uh, right? Um, so it's 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 a fascinating stage in life, uh, and they are like a vibrant and a dynamic city, a section of the society or the country or the community, right? Um, but then let's understand them a little bit more. Like who are these youth? Okay, uh, and some would say the the swipe generation, okay, uh, uh, multitasking, uh, you know, thirty six hour a day, a five minute attention span. Uh, there are so many such expressions, right, that are described for the youth today, right? Um, five minute, five minute attention span. I know most of you guys are young people, so you know, please, please be attentive for more than five minutes. Okay. Um, in diverse avenues, the contemporary world attributes great significance to the youth. Their life and their contributions to society are in a technology-driven world. Children or youth mostly have the final say where problem-solving, gadget buying, and decision-making are concerned. Okay, um, it, it is, so, I just want to read this and you know, elaborate. Youth and their trends are of great significance to the society and to the business sector. Okay, listen, guys. So, youth and their trends are of great significance, right, to to the society and the business sector, to religion and politics. A major industries observe youth trends to decide on what to manufacture. That's a lot, isn't it? It's, it's, it's huge, isn't it? while marketing organizations constantly evolve new styles in youth marketing. 
consequently, research of, on youth trends and perspectives uh, has assumed great significance today. So all these great organizations, all these fashion industries or whatever, you know, digital marketing, and all of them are observing the trend among the young people. And based on what the trend is, so what the assumption or the understanding is, this industry sets the trend and the people follow. But that is not the case. Right? It's amazing to know that the young people set the trend and the billion dollar industries look at them to, you know, to grow their businesses and uh, to, you know, um, everything that they want to do. So that's another definition and description of who the youth are. If, you know, as much as they are multitasking, they want to do a million things at the same time. Uh, you know, they don't think that uh, in a day there is 24 hours. You know, there's it's always more than 20, 24 hours for them in a day. Um, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and so now we're having understood who the youth are. The question arises, why focus on the youth? Right? We've just understood that, okay, you know, they set the trend and everybody else are watching them. They are the most dynamic section of the society. Uh, you know, it's the most fascinating stage in life, the most vibrant and the most amazing parts. And there's so many things happening. And so the question now comes, why focus on the youth? Okay, uh, so what Dr. G.C. Mana, uh, who is the Director General of Central Statistics uh, Office of Indian Government uh, says, okay, um, in his report in Youth in India 2017, he says, youth is the most valuable segment of the population. The human resource potential of individuals not only gain maximum, but also reaches its peak during period. Youth in reality represent the present of our country. Okay, youth in reality represent the present of our country. Our young men, young ones, when nourished properly, can grow like a huge redwood tree. But if not controlled or neglected, can erupt like a volcano. No country can afford to ignore its youth. India is a youth nation in the sense that share of its youth in the total population, and this is from 2011, but and another study was done in 2016 or 17, this percentage is almost doubled, guys. This percentage is almost doubled. Okay, just, just to finish what he said, okay, the youth of our nation are the trustees of prosperity. Youth is a huge reservoir of energy which need to be tapped and harnessed intelligently for the development of the society. The changing demographic profile of the world has thrown a window of opportunity favoring India. The changing demographic profile of the world has thrown a window of opportunity favoring India. Why? Presently, India has the largest share of youth population in the world and will continue to hold so for the next 20 years. Isn't that amazing? Right? To know that we, India, is the youngest country in the world. There's a huge population of, uh, of our nation are the young people. And it's going to be like that for the next 20 years. Now, it suddenly gives a different perspective as to why youth ministry is important, isn't it? Yes, yeah. And some of the stats that's mentioned and everything that he's mentioned, uh, it, it's like it's like a wake-up call. It's like, wow, there's so much potential here, right? Uh, we see that youth is the most generous uh, time and so target it's targeted by all. Um, if approached well, this is the best time in a person's life to be molded for good or for bad. Right? If approached well, this is the best time in a person's life to be molded for good or for bad. Um, the enemy knows this. The devil knows this. That if you can get them young, 
he can do whatever he wants to do with them right and uh, so it's so important and just building on you know the children's ministry i'm sure pastor selena would have stressed on the importance of them how precious they are um you know and when when you look at a certain terrorist groups uh, how they brainwash little children and uh, you know putting seeds into them of so much of hatred and anger and resentment into the into such innocent mind why because they know that they that their mind is so fragile and, and so precious that they can it can be molded to the way they want it to be molded right that's why it says for good or for bad right and and so suddenly it increases you know it raises this question of the importance of discipleship what is the church doing uh, you know etc is the church molding their youth the way they think the way they live their lives um you know is there a youth ministry that is kind of doing that you know um so youth are the best agents of change they hold the key to the lifestyle of the world and we saw that youths are the one the young people are the one that set the trends for all the other organization to follow isn't it and it is a time of never ending newness and learning about themselves and the world around they possess a spontaneous zeal for values like love unity peace and justice they are the real today and tomorrow our future leaders like aaron says political and religious priests and laity are all among them okay um, so that's the young people that's that's the youth um that's Okay, if not if not molded properly, they can erupt like a volcano. Uh, so it's most precious and yet can be dangerous at the same time, isn't it? Okay, so so just a few questions coming back to our original question: Why we need youth ministry, right? And everything that you said is right, but you know the the Jewish community, right? The the Jews and the way they function. they take education very seriously in those days now education in terms of educating themselves educating their children in the torah okay that's that's god's word for them right um it's the first five books of moses um and so here we see that 2000 years ago jewish children had a clear path to adulthood that included youth ministry right so the local synagogue would hire a rabbi whose primary role was to educate was educating children right check this out starting at age of 4 or 5 which is known as the beth shefer okay this standard you know we have first grade second grade third grade so um in this grade called beth shefer starting at age 4 or 5 children would learn to read right and memorize the torah okay. and at age 10 having memorized the torah and this is faster at age 10 they are expected and they have they will have memorized the torah are you able to fathom the grace yeah <laughs> you know to know that they would know the inside out of the first five books of the old testament like that okay so children would either spend more time at home learning the family trade or move to the path of the rabbi now so after a certain age right that so they are in that stage till 10 and there is another grade that they get into right a more advanced way so where they be to learn more things of the torah so after a certain point they get to make this decision saying okay you know do i continue studying to go on and become a rabbi or do i take on the family trade you know we see that uh, the disciples of fishermen you know they took on the family trade their father was you know, james peter the father was a fisherman uh, a fisherman and They were also they also had a family tree, 
or they can there can be some of them in the society who would say i want to continue studying and becoming uh, a rabbi right so either path led to an eventual acknowledgement of adulthood at the age of 30 for men okay uh so the jewish community saw the importance of uh, educating the children from a very young age and all the way to the young adulthood until they are 30 and they had that option and some of the scriptures says in ecclesiastes ecclesiastes 12:1 says remember also your creator the days of your youth before the evil days come and the years draw near of which you will say i have no pleasure in them psalm 119 How can a young man keep his way pure by guarding it according to your word? Ezekiel 16:20. Yet I will remember my covenant with you in the days of your youth, and I will establish for you an everlasting covenant. Proverbs 22:6. It says, "Train up your child in the way he should go; even when he is old, he will not depart from it." And now the word of the Lord came to me, saying Jeremiah one four eight. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, and before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. I do not say I am only a youth, for to all to whom I send you, you shall go, and whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, declares the Lord. Okay. Uh, just, I mean, just a simple exercise, uh, not it. But uh, can you think of other uh, individuals from the Bible who were young that God called at a young age? David. Okay. Yeah. He's still a boy, isn't it? God calls him as man after God's own heart while he was still a boy. Okay. Okay. Who else? Who else do you think? Timothy. Joseph was a boy. The thing, yeah. But historians, scholars say, when 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 God encountered Mary uh, to Gabriel, uh, Mother Mary, she was only a, a teenage girl, about between thirteen and fifteen. And Jeremiah is another example. Right. See, so the point, and and other historians and scholars say that. most of the disciples of jesus except for peter they were all in their teenagers and uh, there is a valid explanation to that and uh, we'll uh, we'll talk about that at a later point but just just consider that right if if all the disciples of jesus were all teenagers it's amazing to know that god chose a bunch of teenagers to change the world isn't it Right? How amazing is that? Okay, so uh, I think we're kind of setting the, establishing the foundation pretty clear, and why we need the youth ministry. And from the scriptures, we see uh, not just from the worldly perspective, as we learned before, that the importance you know, India being the young nation, and uh, you know, and, and all, and we see the scriptures stressing on the importance of of youth, uh, and we can learn a little bit about uh, the. the importance um, of molding a young mind from the jewish community and how they uh, how they stressed on the importance uh, of discipleship okay uh, <clears throat> so can we understood who the youth are why is it important uh, to have youth ministry we look at the role of the youth in today's church Right, the role of the youth in today's church. What is their role in the church today? Right, uh, teaching young people in the church to grow in their relationship with the Lord prepares them to serve Christ in all they do. As a result, this nurtures the congregation and allows the church to flourish. 
teaching young people in the church to grow in their relationship with the Lord is them to serve Christ in all they do. Okay. Uh, this is seen many times in the Bible as God often used young people to do great things. Uh, what is Timothy, as Prince just mentioned, right? Uh, what is Timothy to pastor and lead an Ephesian church when he was a teenager? Uh, 1 Timothy 4.12 says, Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young. But set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. Set an example. Youth need guidance and support as they navigate through the most challenging part of their development and seek to grow in their walk with Christ. Christ-like leaders are needed to serve young members of the congregation and help them to reach their full potential. So, uh, so this is an exercise I did with some of uh, my young people in church. I, I asked them, uh, why is youth ministry important? And I asked them, why is youth ministry important? And this is this this is the some of the responses I got. It says, youth ministry helps to equip future leaders with sound, practical biblical training, encourage them to uh, stay firm on course for Christ, and empower them with everything that they need to carry the gospel out into the world. Equip, encourage, empower. Youth ministry helps present biblical truth to young people in a relatable manner while addressing real issues that they face on a daily basis, very different from those that adults' children face. It is in these years that they form core beliefs. It also helps them form a community of young believers who can inspire and encourage one another. Okay? So remember, the question is, why is youth ministry important? Right? Setting the tone to build the next generation to of Jesus followers. To turn off airplane mode. Oops, sorry. Young generation in church needs to know the right path in the midst of all questions from the peers. Youth ministry is important to guide in the right direction and to make Christ relevant and gospel meaningful to youngsters so that they can have a relationship with God in their own way in the context of the world. Okay. Um, so this is where we end. So why is youth ministry important? Um, you, you've given your answers. And uh, we see just a few important uh, points mentioned here. Okay, so what I want to really do, uh, let's stop presenting. Okay. And, um, I want to I want to continue with um, the next chapter in the next class on Monday, but um, like even as we just continue and pursue this course on, on on youth ministry, and we just seen the facts and the importance of young people and the youth in India uh, and you know in every other country. Um, I want you to just, you know, just pray and ask God, uh, you know, what is your heart for the youth? Because as mentioned, for the next 20 years, India is going to be young, a young nation. And uh, and this is one part of the society. We, it just cannot be, simply cannot be ignored. Right? So why is youth ministry important? because of the number of lives that are out there at stake. And if the church doesn't reach out to them, if the church is not going to be the salt and light in the city, in your city and in this nation, or who else is going to be? Right? If we don't influence, the only organization that should be influencing the, uh, the youth of our nation, uh, on every aspect or every area, let's just take for example, uh, it's just take sex for that matter. Sex is God's idea, right? He crescendos, right? Uh, on that, it's pure. It's, it's supposed to be holy. If the church doesn't talk about that topic, every idea about sex the young people or teenagers are getting from is from the ads that they see, right? So why is church? Why is youth ministry important? Uh, in the church, 
Because if we don't, we lose souls, right? And millions. And so in your time, you know, uh, when, whenever you can, ask God, it's like, hey, well, what is your heart for this young generation of our nation, of my land, you know, wherever you are from? Okay, yeah, can you do that? So I just don't want this to be, it's not a course, and we will learn, where we will, where we will learn practical things, but then, um, but I want us to hear the heart of God, right? Okay, so with that, I just want to pause here and uh, continue with the uh, second chapter in the next class. So this is like a proper flow. Okay. Um, are you guys all doing all right? Okay, it's a short class, I, I know, but it's fine. Okay, so I'll stop the recording. And, uh,